Okay, let's get started on working on some trig problems. First thing I want to do is work some problems. If you're given a trig function, and then you're asked to find all the rest of trig functions. For example, let me just sort of write out this problem. For an acute angle with sine of theta equals two thirds, find all six trig functions. Okay, let me emphasize now, for this kind of problem, we're really looking at two things. First, I want you to think about figuring out which quadrant this angle is going to be in, right? Thinking of the xy axis, the xy coordinate system, there's four quadrants. And for this one, two pieces of information tell us what's quadrant. Acute means the angle is going to be less than 90 degrees. So right away, I know this angle is going to be in quadrant one. In quadrant one, it turns out all the trig functions are all positive. Sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant, they all end up being positive numbers. So in all these problems, the first thing you need to think about, you need to figure out first which quadrant you're going to be in, and then you go figure out the actual number values, and then at the very end, you have to make sure that all your trig functions have the correct sign. And the sign is going to be based upon which quadrant you're in. So I know for this problem, I'm in quadrant one, once I find all my trig functions, I know they're going to all be positive. Now there are actually two ways to start finding the trig functions for this problem. Now the first way, and probably the most common way I would guess is, is simply take the information that you were given and we're going to create a right triangle and based upon the sine of theta equals two thirds, we're going to create a right triangle where, remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. We're going to create a triangle, a right triangle. Here's my theta. So the sine of this opposite is 2, here's my opposite side, hypotenuse is 3. So the sine of theta equals 2 thirds gives me the dimensions for two sides of my triangle. I can now find the length of the third side by using the Pythagorean formula, right? The Pythagorean formula says the hypotenuse squared equals the side squared, let's call this x, plus the other side squared. So if I solve this thing for x, this is going to be 9 minus 4, turns out 5 equals x squared. If I take the square root of both sides, I know x is going to be square root of 5. So now this side of my triangle square root of 5. Now that I have the lengths of the three sides of the triangle, 
I can simply go through and find all my trig functions. And because I'm in the first quadrant, I know they're all positive. So, we've already got the sine. How about the cosine of theta? Cosine, so ka, ka, adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent would be square root of 5 over the hypotenuse 3. How about tangent? Toa. Opposite over adjacent. Opposite is 2 over adjacent. Square root of 5. And now the remaining 3, I'm just going to derive from already knowing sine, cosine, theta. So for instance, cotangent of theta It's just the reciprocal of the tangent of theta. So I flip this and I end up with square root of 5 over 2. I know that the cosecant of theta is the reciprocal of the sine of theta. So if the sine of theta is 2 thirds, I flip it to get the cosecant 3 halves. And finally, the secant of theta is the reciprocal, reciprocal of the cosine. So it's 3 over square root of 5. All right, now there is a second way, and let me just show you this once for this first problem in case some of you want to do it. And that's by using some of these trig identities. And the most common one that's used all the time that hopefully you've learned by now and memorized, sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals one. Now hopefully you realize this problem says the sine squared of theta is two thirds. If I plug in sine squared of theta in this equation, the only thing that's left that I don't know is the cosine of theta. I can actually now solve for cosine of theta. So let's do that. So since the sine of theta is 2 thirds, I have 2 thirds squared plus cosine squared of theta equals 1. I want to now solve this equation for the cosine of theta. So it's a, well, two thirds squared is going to be four ninths, correct? So I'm going to subtract four ninths from both sides. And one minus four ninths I change the 1 to a fraction that's 9 over 9. So 9 over 9 minus 4 over 9 is 5 over 9. So now I have cosine squared of theta is 5 over 9. Since I want the cosine of theta, I need to take the square root of both sides of this equation. I end up with cosine of theta equals square root of 5 over square root of 9. Of course, I know the square root of 9 is 3. So I've just discovered that the cosine of theta equals square root of 5 over 3, <clears throat> which is the same thing as I found using the triangle method. All right? Now, for this one, if I was to finish the problem, easiest thing now would be to say, if you remember the tangent of theta, is sine of theta over cosine of theta. Sine of theta, they told me is two thirds. I found that the cosine of theta is five thirds. And if you do the math here, you end up with tangent of theta
is 2 over square root of 5, which is the same thing we found before. All right. So there's really two ways to go about solving this kind of problem. Let me do one more problem, and I'm going to use the triangle method. And this one's going to be a little trickier. Just let me give you the basic information for this one. They tell us. that the tangent of the angle is negative two-fifths and they also tell us that the cosine of theta is greater than zero which basically is saying the cosine is positive. So once again, these are all sort of like two-part problems. The first thing you need to figure out is which quadrant your angle is going to be in. So let's look. They say the tangent of theta is negative two-fifths. If you think about your coordinate system, where and which quadrant is the tangent negative? Well, if you think about it, the tangent is sine over cosine. So you have to pick the quadrants where the sine and the cosine are different signs, where one's positive, one's negative. It's not the first quadrant. In the second quadrant, the sine is positive, the cosine is negative. So in the second quadrant, the tangent's negative. The third quadrant, because the sine and cosine are both negative, therefore the tangent's positive. But if I go to the fourth quadrant, because the sine is negative and the cosine is positive, once again, the tangent is positive or is negative in the fourth quadrant. So a negative tangent puts me in the second or fourth quadrant, but then I now also know that the cosine of theta is positive. So of these, of the second and fourth quadrant, which one has the cosine of theta being positive? The fourth quadrant. So I know from the very start, this angle is in the fourth quadrant. And that becomes important because now I'm gonna go get all the values of my trig functions and based upon which quadrant I'm in, I know whether each trig function will be a positive or negative number. Just to review in quadrant four, cosine is positive, therefore the secant is also positive because it's simply the reciprocal of the cosine. The sine is negative, that causes the tangent and cotangent to be negative, and since the sine is negative, that means the cosecant is also negative. So basically of the six trig functions, Cosine and secant are positive, and the other four are going to be negative. But what I want to do now is just I want to find the actual values of those trig functions. So I've told that tangent of theta is negative 2 over 5. I don't really care about this negative now. All I really care about are the numbers, 2 over 5. I'm going to create my right triangle. and I'll put theta here. I want to create a triangle where the tangent of theta is two over five. Tangent is toa opposite over adjacent. So I'm saying basically the opposite's gonna be two, the adjacent's five. Once again, this negative sign in working with my right triangle does not mean anything. All I care about are the numbers, the two over the five. Now let's go ahead and find the hypotenuse. We can call it x. Once again, the Pythagorean formula says the hypotenuse squared equals the first leg squared plus the second leg squared. Four plus 25 is 29. Take the square root of both sides. It looks like the hypotenuse is going to be square root of 29. Now once we have the three sides of the triangle, then it's pretty easy to get the trig functions. 
So let's just start. Sine of theta. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So it's going to be 2 over square root of 29. And now we have to figure out the sine. Since we're in the fourth quadrant, the sine is negative. So sine of theta is negative 2 over square root of 29. Cosine of theta, so ka adjacent over hypotenuse, 5 over square root of 29. Now in the fourth quadrant, the cosine is positive, so my cosine of theta is 5 over square root of 29. Let's do tangent of theta. Actually, they gave us tangent of theta. How about cotangent of theta? Simply take the reciprocal of the tangent, negative 5 halves. How about the cosecant of theta, which is the reciprocal of the sine? And of course, it's still going to be negative. And finally, the secant of theta, which is the reciprocal of the cosine. So it's positive square root of 29 over 5. All right, so that's how you determine the other trig functions when you're given one trig function. It's really a two-step process. First, figure out which quadrant your angle is in, and then go find the actual values of the trig functions, and then you'll know the signs of the trig functions based upon which quadrant you're in.